media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Chris Vermeulen from the TechnicalTraders.com. Welcome back to the show, Chris. Hey, thanks for having me, Jim. Chris, are precious metals looking up? They are. I mean, they've uh, they've they've had a nice rally over the past. Uh, pretty much almost a month and they're they're starting to test some resistance areas when we look at gold and silver both of them have rallied up to more or less the september highs and they're trying to eat through that resistance area Um, they haven't done so yet they're running into a little bit of resistance this week but overall they look like they are trying to turn a corner Uh, a nice little leading indicator to get an idea of what physical metals are going to do is to look at the miners and when we look at the miners especially gold miners, we can see that they've actually broken through the September highs with quite a bit of power. They're now trading above their key moving averages, like the 20-day and the 50-day moving average. Um, There's been a really nice shift to the upside, and that's what we want to see, is the gold miners, which are a leveraged play on metals, move first. And that's what typically happens, and then we'll see gold follow. And sometimes gold can actually take a couple of weeks before it'll play catch-up with the miners themselves. And we're actually seeing this in, with copper miners as well. The COPEX, COPX is a symbol for the copper miners. Um, it's broken up to the upside and has had a quick little pullback. So we're definitely seeing um, the physical metals are testing resistance. The miners have already broken out. Uh, so I think we're going to see a run in the precious metals uh, going into the end of this year. With that being said, I think we might see them pause and pull back a little bit here because they are at resistance. Um, so there's going to be a little bit of overhead, uh, some selling pressure, and the miners have had a nice run too. So I think they might actually trade sideways a little bit lower, take a breather before they start to head higher. But I'm lo- I'm liking the looks of what uh, what's unfolding here in the precious metals sector. Energy, uh, oil still remaining uh, surprisingly strong considering this time of year is when it uh, has already started its uh, usual plunge to its lows in December. Yeah, oil continues to just grind its way higher. Or I, really, I wouldn't even call it a grind. It continues to rally. It has a series of a four or five day rally and then a quick two or three day pullback. It's just been repeating this really since uh, almost August. And uh, we're, we're heading up there towards that $88, $89 per barrel level you and I talked about several months ago was the long term target for crude. And we're only, you know, we're only about uh, three and a half dollars away from that. And the good thing is uh, the chart still looks really bullish, and the energy sector stocks are doing kind of what the precious metal stocks are doing. Energy stocks have popped this week. They've starting to, to run higher, and we want to see these leveraged energy stocks run first because it usually means we're going to see crude oil follow suit. So I really still like the energy sector, the energy stocks, uh, because I think there's a little bit of room left. Now, I think oil is... It's getting long in the teeth. When we hit 88 or 89, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a very sharp pullback. But that's still a few dollars away. And sometimes the biggest move in equities happens right at the end of a trend. And I think energy stocks could have a really strong pop and push here uh, as crude oil tries to hit that target. And then um, and then it'll probably be lights out, probably see a, a sharp pullback on the chart because this is a multi-month pattern hitting a measured move. And when it does that, usually sellers jump in and uh, there's profit taking and then people drive the price down trying to take advantage of the falling price by shorting the market. Chris, uh, you were one of the first to say natural gas was a great place to be because of its uh, position and the way it was rising. What's your position on natural gas now? Yeah, natural gas, it, it's still in an uptrend, but the daily chart really has some mixed signals. The daily chart is showing increased volatility um, more or less, it's kind of lost its upward momentum. I think we could see it put in a, a head and shoulders pattern. Um, it's had a pop this week into a 
what looks to be a right shoulder. And um, if the if it does roll over here and reverse lower from the six dollar mark, uh, if we if the price drops and breaks below about four ninety or four eighty five, uh, I think we're going to see a very sharp drop all the way down to four dollars, potentially three fifty very quickly. But natural gas has got this really kind of funky setup because it is still in an uptrend, but the short term chart patterns are pointing to much lower prices. And when you get that mixed signal. And you get the type of volatility that we have in natural gas where it's moving like 8 to 12 or 13 percent a day. That is a sign that uh, it's a high risk play. It's going to flip and flop. And if you're on the wrong side, you're going to get hurt real bad. So with a mixed signal and this type of volatility, it's best to steer clear of this sector. I think uh, this uh, commodity at this point. The overall equity markets, what do you see for the Dow, NASDAQ and the S&P? Well, we're, we're seeing the markets continue to push up. The Dow pushing all-time highs, SP 500 hitting all-time highs this week. NASDAQ threatening, trying to touch all-time highs as well. Uh, you know, they're, they're a little long in the teeth as well. They've, we've had a strong rally. They, um, they're starting to run out of a little bit of momentum. And the way the charts are set up here is we're either going to have a three or four percent correction, a really quick pullback in the stock market before I think it goes higher. Um, or it's going to pop and it's going to take off and run into the year end. It's a it's a explosive kind of chart pattern that's been building here. Cycles have just re- reversed. We saw a sell off in September in uh, in early October, a lot like we saw last year in September and October, which was followed by a multi month rally to the upside, uh, and we could be in something very similar to that. So. Again, this market is just teetering. And the question is, are we going to have a pullback first or are we going to push higher um, right away? Um, I'm hoping we're going to just push higher because we are long equities and we're still in a full-on bull market. But we just need to wait and see what unfolds here. But I wouldn't be surprised and I wouldn't panic if we see the SP500 pullback, you know, 3 4% from where we are, trade sideways for a week or two. That is perfectly healthy. It actually kind of needs it in order to have a sustainable uh, rally that follows it. We'll have more with Christopher Mullen right after this. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Chris Vermeulen. Chris, what do you see happening with utilities? Yeah, utilities are having a pretty strong day as you and I are speaking here. Uh, they seem to be a, a defensive kind of play. When money gets a little bit nervous, uh, we tend to see them uh, push higher. But uh, they are very sensitive to, to interest rates. We've, we've seen interest rates move down the last three trading sessions, which has kind of helped push utilities a bit higher. Um, overall, utilities, we tend to see consumer staples and even healthcare sector, um, they've all been moving up. And that's kind of a defensive play. When people get nervous because all the stock market, the indexes are at uh, kind of all-time highs, but flirting with previous highs from uh, about a month and a half ago, um, people are worried that it might be a double top. And so they go into some of these defensive plays. And utilities are, are moving up as kind of one of those type of plays. Uh, going forward here. So I, I like utilities a little bit, but um, I don't think that this is the time for them at this point. I think still, I think technology is on the verge of a big run. I think small cap stocks like the Russell 2000 is very close to a big run as well. Uh, the Russell is almost about to break out of a uh, more or less a, you know, a nine month uh, rally or sorry sideways consolidation here and if it can break to the upside the Russell the IWM above $234 uh, a share it could be off to the races for a big move and that would be very bullish small caps typically lead the stock market they are the leverage play on the stock market they're high beta stocks so just like everything else we talked about, when the high beta stocks break out and run, we typically see the big monsters or the commodities or the, the indexes follow suit, like the SP500 in the NASDAQ. So uh, we're, we got a lot, of, a lot brewing on all these charts, commodities uh, testing resistance levels, uh, oil hitting a measured move resistance level soon, um, the Russell consolidating. 
So there's going to be some really big price action, I think, going into January, and we just need to let these markets unfold and, and give us some fresh new signals. Transports, what are they telling us? Well, transportation, have they, they're a leading indicator a lot like the small cap stocks, and they broke out about two weeks ago, and they've just been on fire, uh, ripping to the upside. They're, they're getting close to, to breaking to all-time highs again. When the transportation sector's uh, leading the way, that's telling us that there's a, a, still a very strong economy. Transportation is up, and uh, we're really seeing those take off. And what's interesting is if you're to kind of tear the um, the transportation sector apart and see where some of the money is flowing, what pocket within the transportation? Yeah, the railways, the the rail companies are on fire. Huge, huge moves, like parabolic moves, going straight up over the last the, the last couple of weeks. Obviously, we got sea freights backed up in canals and just freighters all parked out there. Just a huge backlog when it comes to, to sea freight. And, of course, the railway is just picking up the slack. Everybody's shipping with rail. It's kind of the only way to get big containers moving. So it's it's pretty interesting. And the, the, the transportation sector is uh, in rally mode. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's pointing to higher prices for the overall stock market as well. We have a, a truck driver shortage. Is that driven in part by AI? Because we keep being told that big trucks are going to be driven by robots very soon. So why yeah, bother getting know. the trucking if if a robot's going to take your job in a couple of years? Yeah, I, I, I don't know how how close we are to that. I think that's still a long ways away. There's a, uh, it's a little intimidating to think there's going to be uh, computers driving some big trucks, but um, you, know, you never know. I think... Um, <laughs> this whole technology wave, automated cars, the, the autonomous vehicles and, and, and planes, I mean, there's going to be a time when we're going to flick the switch and it's going to be, you know, you're not really driving cars anymore. No one's really flying these planes anymore. There is going to be another huge shift in, in the world and, and how we move and do things. So um, maybe that has something to do with it. Yeah. Although I do remember a joke where a guy gets on a, an airliner and he hears the announcement welcome aboard the world's first fully autonomous airplane nothing can go wrong go wrong go wrong go wrong <laughs> <laughs> that's good <laughs> uh, what's going on with uh bitcoin and the cryptocurrencies yeah we take a look at bitcoin it's poked up to all-time highs there a few days ago and it's uh it's pulling back a little bit uh overall i mean it's back into an uptrend it hit its measured move uh, from where it was supposed to more or less try to run to. It was, it had an upside target of 63,600. Uh, it hit that, which is the previous high as well. And so it popped through there and now we're seeing some selling. Typically when you break through, um, a previous high, you see a, a pierce of it, which is what we've seen. And then you see a little bit of a pause or pullback and it's going to try and digest that move. And so now we're going to see if Bitcoin is going to form a, a nice bull flag, a little pause here. And if it does, then we can measure where the next upside target will be uh, for that. And at this point, um, based on the current run that we've seen here, uh, we're looking at a pretty high level. I can I can draw it on the chart. Give me one second here. We can actually see Bitcoin's next upside target will be roughly uh, eighty six thousand four hundred if uh, the current low here holds. So there's still pretty good upside potential there for Bitcoin. Chris, thank you so much for chatting with us. Hey, always a pleasure, Jim. Thanks for having me on the show. My guest has been Chris Vermeulen from the thetechnicaltraders.com. If you have any questions for Chris or any of our guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com and we'll ask that question for you. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at How Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.